Good morning. I'm Suzanne Shields, the, the director of the Regional Flood Control District, and I'm here to present to you information on our draft master plan for the Kanoa Hills Trails. Um, this was first, the county first acquired this in April of 2018. And so we'll go through a brief PowerPoint. Um, I know this is a little different because we're trying to do this remotely. Um, I will let everybody know that besides this presentation, which will stay on YouTube, you will also be able to uh, go to our web page and view the entire presentation. Um, and, and it will be more detailed because this will include a lot of uh, text as part of the PowerPoint. All right. Okay. So the beginning of our presentation, um, we've been working on this for some time. It's been a rough year with COVID and other things going on. Um, so it took us longer than we wanted to to get this information together. Next, next slide. As I said, the presentation also has an outline of information that you can refer back to. Uh, if, so, if perhaps you don't get to see this whole video or a friend or somebody else says, I missed that and I'd like to see it, again, they'll be able to see it on YouTube as well as going to our web page. Next page. I'll begin with just a general pro project overview. Um, I think, next slide. As I said earlier, uh, Kanoa Hills was first a golf course. Uh, in the early 80s, it was built, and sometime around 2015 um, or so, it was shut down for about five years. Uh, it went back to being pretty much um, a weed patch. Uh, there's still native vegetation around, but it was uh, not maintained in any fashion, and there was a lot of erosion and other problems. In 2018, Pima County took it over uh, under the work of the Flood Control District as well as Pima County Natural Resources, Parks and Recreation. We started to do some improvements in 2019 to make it uh, safe. Uh, there was, like I said, erosion. There were places where there were potholes, um, uh, retaining walls that were falling down. And in 2020, and we started doing some of our improvements as well as putting together this master plan. Next, ne next slide. So the project's goals and objectives, when the Board of Supervisors accepted the golf course, they accepted it as an open space and natural resource uh, facility. Uh, the idea was to let it go back to more of a natural setting, um, enhance the existing ecology and hydrology function. Uh, the, most of the wash, washes are down in the, the golf course and have been redirected, and so we want to reestablish a natural meander. We wanted to promote environmental stewardship with different stakeholders and visitors' engagement and provide for passive recreation opportunities for a range of users. Next slide. Some of the people we work with, of course, have been, um, like I said, Parks and Recreation, our Flood Control District. We partnered with Audubon Society, and more importantly for the Green Valley area, uh, the Green Valley Council, um, the Green, Green Valley Foundation, Friends of Kanoa Parks, and there's 10 HOAs and others neighbors. One of the things that we took to begin our master plan was some work that the Green Valley Council had put together before the county acquired this, where they did a, a real outreach, had a parks committee, and was trying to determine what kind of park uses uh, would be appropriate at this location. And in general, what were some of the park and recreation uh, needs that needed to be satisfied in the Green Valley area. Next slide. 
So on doing a site assessment, it's important to remember this was a golf course. So it was designed for one-way travel and the pathways and things were laid out to go from the different tee boxes to the different tee boxes. So there are some constraints that we had to look at as well as the topography and the floodplains. Next slide. The central red area is the Kanoa Hills Trails. Like the other surrounding golf courses, you can see it, while it might be 136 acres, it's not like a nice square rectangle um, where you could do any kind of park amenities. It wanders in and out through the existing subdivisions of Kanoa Hills. There's adjacent go uh, golf courses. On the west, on the east side of the Santa Cruz River is the Kanoa um, Preservation Park. Uh, it's where we have the baseball and softball facilities. There's uh, some trails in that area. Also, along both the east and west side of the Santa Cruz River is the historic Kanoa Ranch. Uh, we've been doing another number of improvements to all three of these parks, and so I'd like to just point them out that not everything is going to be able to fit on just Kanoa Hills. We have these other facilities that, which will allow us to do some additional work. For example, we finally got approval from the Union Pacific Railroad for an underpass to go under the railroad so that you go, could go from Kanoa Preservation Park to the De Anza Trail, and from there you can get to the historic Kanoa Ranch. Um, over the last couple of years, we've added a pond to Kanoa Ranch, did a number of improvements around the buildings and the grounds and facilities. So the pond is now a centralized Bird, birding facilities, there's a numerous pathways that can be used, and uh, the availability of doing meetings. Like I said, there were a little constraint on Kanoa Hills. Next slide. This slide shows, uh, if you will, bicycle slash trails maps. Uh, we do want to make sure that we have some connection to, to at least all three of these parks. It is a little difficult at Kanoa Hills because um, there are a lot of blind um, curves, or if you will, actually uh, corners that you have to get around. And so it's very difficult to, to convert it to two-way traffic. Next slide. Looking visually, um, the more interesting viewing is looking towards the Santa Rita's, which we might expect. Um, the, the east of Can uh, Camino del Sol is a wider open area, more of the natural um, vegetation. Looking up, going to the west, you see the tailings, uh, the golf course areas are a little bit more confined, and again, you're traveling in and out of the different subdivisions. Next slide. The vegetation, we have the natural desert. We still have uh, some fairly nice mature canopy that we want to uh, enhance. Uh, like I said, a number of this was not maintained at all, and so we've been doing a lot of pruning. And then, of course, there are where there was grass, uh, the golf course. Um, we now have invasive or weeds that have grown in, and we have to control those. Uh, nature's not been our friend the last couple of years. Uh, we haven't gotten any rain. We've done some test plots. Uh, we put down some hydro seeding on the, the old driving range to help try to hold down the dust, but we just haven't been getting any rain. Uh, next slide. So what we have to do is look at some of our connectivity. Uh, there are two culverts that go under Camino del Sol, which do allow the east to join with, with the west side, but um, they're a little dark. Uh, you have to go through with them slowly. Other areas, we've added in some additional trails and tried to mow and keep the weeds down along where we have the concrete pass. Uh, most of the paths are about six to eight feet wide, which are not uh, suitable for two-way uh, multi-use uh, uh, travel. Next slide. So some of our recent improvements, we'll just go through these briefly, um, because we found out not, not everybody knows where we are, where is this, and uh, 
where it lies and what we've been doing. Next slide. So some of the first things we, we did, um, if you look at what it looked like, uh, we've done previous restoration projects, one along the Rito River, showing it in 2015, and then now with the vegetation grown in, um, in 2017. And so we're looking at trying to do the same thing. We've, at, at Kanoa Ranch, we've established a, uh, starting in 2019, a Cienega with nat natural grasses. And you can see in pretty much a year, uh, a little less than a year, it's already grown in. So we're hoping to be able to do something similar at Kanoa Hills. Some of our recent improvements um, was we did improve the parking area around the, the um, golf, uh, golf the driving range um, to a, some fa a fine of Freeport McMoran for dust pollution. Uh, they had to contribute money and we put in uh, paved asphalt along Camino del Sol um, in several locations. We've improved the connectivity and we've done a lot of site improvements. Next slide. The old, we, unfortunately the old restrooms were not suitable. They had been flooded and there was severe damage inside. So we removed them. Uh, restrooms are a priority. I know the different people we talk to and they'll probably be returned to these sites at some point. Um, because that's where we have sewer, water, and electricity. Uh, there were some, uh, we call them social trails where people were just walking through, but because they were having a lot of use, we went ahead and, and paved them uh, for better access by all. And then there were some of the older ponds where there's been a lot of erosion or there was old liner, um, old irrigation pipe, and we cleaned those areas up. Next slide. We continue to work with signage and taking care of erosion. The bad news for trying to reestablish grasses, um, it hasn't rained. Uh, but that also means that we haven't seen what kind of erosion we have. Uh, we had, had, had seen some along some of the steeper slopes, so we will address these as we see them uh, each monsoon or winter rain season. Next slide. More recently, we're looking at some of our phasing. Um, Tucson Audubon Society in the light blue areas got a grant from Freeport McMoran to, to uh, put in some environmental restoration. We also have the old ponds where we were been putting in some plantings because they hold water. And then there's the driving range, which is so steep, it's, which it was made that way to direct the, the golf balls back to, to the, um, the beginning, but we're going to have to grade it. And so we're trying to come up with some concepts of how we could grade it, first by reestablishing some native grasses and then coming in with some other kind of plantings and maybe some pathways and working with the neighbors. Next slide. This, our, we came up with three master concepts. A lot of what's there is dictated by where the existing pa uh, paths are. Uh, the first one, next slide. If, if we go one where we leave it pretty much as is and we just try to do restoration, it'll be lower maintenance and lower cost. As we go to something that has more active recreation, we increase both our cost of improvements as well as our cost of maintenance. So it's a kind of a balancing act. And what I would imagine is that we actually will start with a, a low maintenance concept and then slowly build upon that as funding is allowed. Next slide. This is the first concept and like I said, it's keeping it pretty much where it is. So first thing everybody wants to know was where will be the, be the parking. We are talking with the Green Valley uh, Recreation District and the foundation about uh, leasing parking spaces at the old uh, country club house. Um, they have more parking spaces than they need for their proposed juices, and so it would be something that we would lease for them and would be open to the public. That would avoid having to put out any additional parking that might be intrusive into the neighbors. 
The other thing might be uh, restrooms. Again, we might go back to where the existing pre restrooms were um, that we took down because that's where there's water and sewer. There's also perhaps an opportunity to put in a restroom somewhere near the clubhouse. Uh, but this is pretty much, yeah, next slide. Um, there are some places that we, that we call out both here and first slide and this, this slide where we talk about um, volunteer uh, gardening and we ha already have some of those places where somebody who's doing it after they just quit uh, taking care of the golf course they would take care of the vegetation itself. We're hoping to do some, the light blue would be uh, restoration that we might do uh, with Tucson Audubon Society and the red might be other areas where we more actively put in environmental restoration to improve the ecological value. Uh, we would pretty much might add some DG paths and try to look at improving connectivity. Next slide. This is a little bit more intense. We're trying to have some other type of recreational facilities like maybe, maybe uh, exercise stations, um, maybe putting in where all of the pathways are, are concrete so accessible to all and maybe increasing the amount of uh, vegetation and restoration. This would be the higher cost. Next slide. Looking forward to the next slide. Um, we have come up with some ideas on the driving range. Uh, there are a lot of different ideas that came forward from the public previously, but you have to recognize that one, it's a floodplain. There's quite a bit of water that comes down and then goes under, under the road. Uh, you're right in a neighborhood area. And so we're looking at some water harvesting to maybe slow down the flow of what gets under the road, use it for uh, establishing native vegetation, whether that be mesquite bosquets, uh, maybe working with the neighborhoods and volunteers on uh, establishing little garden areas and having some pathways. Um, perhaps some picnic tables and uh, ramadas. The most of the ramadas we're talking about are uh, at other locations, trying to cite things where it would not be a nuisance on the neighborhoods, yet would provide an amenity in place where people would have some shade to sit in. So this is just a very initial concept, as are the three other plans. Next slide. Um, we have put together a couple things, and I'm going to ask uh, Tess Wagner, who put together this presentation, to uh, go through some of our, what was our visitor use questionnaires. We used SurveyMonkey to ask people, do you know where this, where, where are you? And do you know, know, do you use this park? What do you use it, use it for? And how do you use it? We also have developed, again using SurveyMonkey, a uh, concept feedback questionnaire because we cannot at this point, because of COVID, meet with you in person, but we're still very much interested in getting your, your thoughts on the concepts. So I'm gonna have her go through those and then um, we'll fi finish up. Tess? Thank you, Suzanne. Um, so these are some of the preliminary results from the survey. Uh, the survey actually closes March 19th, that's a Friday. So um, as of now, we have uh, actually just a bit over 600 responses. This slide was put together a few days ago when we had fewer. But um, uh, yeah, so all these results are preliminary. Um, so, so far, 89% of the responses are from Green Valley residents. So uh, most of the people um, interested in this um, are from Green Valley. 62% uh, of respondents live within three miles of Kanoa Hills Trail, so quite close to the park. 31% uh, visit Kanoa Hills Trails uh, three or more times per week, so um, we have a, a large number of people who use the park quite regularly. 64% uh, use motor vehicle parking to access Kanoa Hills Trails, so um, that does tell us that uh, parking is, is an important uh, thing to consider, which is, is something, as Suzanne mentioned, we've been discussing and figuring out. Uh, walking and running are the most common activities um, that, the, that site visitors currently participate in. 
uh, with 79% of, of people in, enjoying those activities. Picnicking and gathering are the most common activities that visitors would like to um, engage with on site, but currently don't. Uh, so, so this tells us that um, providing you know, more picnic tables and things like that would, would be useful. 60% um, of respondents um, prefer, well, they focus their recreation in the eastern parcels of the park. So those were the ones that Suzanne pointed out uh, they're a bit, little bit larger, uh, nice views of the Santa Rita's, um, so that kind of aligns with, with what we, we thought might be the case. Um, while 20 per, only 20% predominantly use the western parcels. Uh, restrooms are definitely the most desired site amenity by respondents. Um, and the most common reason that um, respondents may not visit Kanoa Trails is because there aren't enough site amenities, such as restrooms and drinking fountains and, and those sorts of things. Um, and then we also ask uh, respondents to rate the three goals, the three master plan goals that uh, Suzanne mentioned earlier. So we found that ecological restoration um, so far is rated as the most important goal, and then that's followed by recreational enhancements. Um, and then community building and volunteer opportunities was uh, the least important goal. So those are the preliminary results from this uh, visitor use survey that we will be using going forward. Uh, so did you, okay. Um, so going forward, um, as I mentioned, the, the surveys, uh, there are two questionnaires that are open right now, and both of them close on Friday, March 19th. Um, so if, if you could um, get your responses in by then, that would be awesome. Um, this is what the, uh, the initial results for the visitor use questionnaire look like um, on our end. So I went through some of those results, um, but here you can see, um, so here are some more details. These are the mostly retirees um, have been our respondents. Um, these are the other uh, sites in the area that um, respondents use. Uh, so Canola Ranch was a big one there. Um, and then this is that question about how often people use Canola Hills trails. Um, and then the seasons, not a lot in summer, which is not terribly surprising. Um, and then these are uh, different parking lot amenities, so motor vehicle parking is important. Um, and then this is about uh, parking lot location. Um, and then this is that question about why people may not uh, visit Kanoa Hills Trails. Um, so uh, now we're gonna look at the quest, uh, the concept feedback questionnaire. So this is the second one that is, uh, we're um, releasing today. Actually, it, it's up and open right now, so you can begin um, giving your responses. Um, and this, this questionnaire is uh, not so much, the previous one was more um, multiple choice, and this one we really want to know in your own words what you like and dislike about each of the concepts. Um, so uh, there's, so yeah, here's, <laughs> Here's an example um, of what you could say. But um, one thing to, uh, if you're unsure what to think about or what to look for, a couple ideas are, um, look at the layout of the site. So, uh, you know, where have we put pollinator gardens um, or picnic tables or ramadas, that sort of thing, and are those locations good for you? Um, or, or would you prefer to have them elsewhere? Um, and then amenities as well. Um, are we you know, providing all the amenities that you hope to see? That sort of thing. So tell us what we're doing good and what we're, we're not doing so good. Um, so it goes through each concept and asks the questions. And if you, could you go back to the, um, sir, the oh, that one, yeah. So if you do have um, issues, I know that the graphic is a little bit small, but what you can do is you can, right click on it and open it in a new tab um, and then you can look at it larger uh, so that that may be helpful um, so keep that in mind um, but that's that's the gist of the uh, concept feedback questionnaire 
Um, so looking forward, as I mentioned, uh, please get those uh, responses to the questionnaires. If you would like to participate in the community feedback gathering, please do that by March 19th. Um, and then this will help us further refine the master plan of Kanoa Hills Trail so that it's most applicable to, to you guys and, and it really responds to what you find important and what you would like to see. Um, again, we're working on finer scale concepts for the driving range to figure out that area. Um, and then if you or others who maybe didn't make this meeting uh, would like to view the um, uh, recorded video of this presentation, uh, you can see that on our YouTube page. Um, and then uh, as well, uh, there's also the link to our uh, website page for this park and that's where you can find project updates, documents such as the draft master plan, um, a PDF of this presentation, and those links to the surveys. So. Okay. Thank you, Tess. Um, this concludes our presentation, but I want to remind you all that uh, we do have the two other sites. Uh, we haven't been able to fit everything in just this you know, Kanoa Hills Trails, there are some constraints. Um, in fact, uh, I, have, I have people throughout the West looking at what we're going to do here at Kanoa Hill Trails because people are, are not using golf courses as much. They're interested to see if we can actually transform this. And so we want to do it thoughtfully and carefully. Even if you get us comments after March 19th, uh, we still will consider them. And because we do have other sites, there may be some recreation needs that you're interested in that perhaps we cannot accommodate here, but we could accommodate somewhere else. Because, for example, um, in the floodplain of the Santa Cruz River area um, in Kanoa Ranch, we're looking at areas where it would be wise, as we put in environmental restoration improvements uh, to have, if you will, fire breaks. Uh, much better than a decomposed granite pathway as a fire break. So we were hoping to increase the amount of area where you can walk, bike, hike, um, run, or, or use equestrian uses in those areas. So those are just some of the examples of what we've been doing. I think most of you know that at um, Kanoa Pres Preservation Park, uh, we're putting in an additional ball field there. So we have a lot of things going on at all three sites, and we'd be interested in knowing what it is that the Green Valley community is most interested in seeing as we move forward. It'll help me be informed as developing plans. It will also help me inform the Board of Supervisors and the county administration on what are the needs as we go forward and try to establish funding for all of these improvements. Thank you for joining us for this presentation. I look forward to getting your responses. And hopefully, in a few months, I look forward to being able to meet you again uh, in a more open setting where we can actually talk and see each other. So thank you again. This concludes our presentation.